Hello and welcome to Marysville City Park for the 2014 Cross Country Invitational. The Marysville Annual Invitational is an exciting event that takes place each year. Coach Rogers does an excellent job getting this event together and there are so many teams from the area. A lot of different color, a lot of different pageantry and of course what a beautiful setting. The, the leaves are just starting to turn some colors and uh, it promises to be an exciting day. Well, as we take a look at the uh, start of the race, the girls are off to a nice start. Uh, let's talk about the strategy just a little bit. As they start in the middle of the track, of course, everybody's at the start line. As they come kind of south towards the concession stand at the Little League Park, um, a lot of bodies in a tight area. What's the strategy? Patrick, let's start with you. Um, usually the people that run straight out in the beginning that try to get ahead end up losing their energy early in the race and can't finish up ahead where they start. A lot of the top runners stay near the middle towards the beginning and pick it up as the race goes on. We talked a little bit about the Marysville Park. As they come up the back stretch, it's a, it's a long stretch along on the west side of the park. We're right in that area with the uh, uh, parallel to the railroad tracks. Is that a good wide open where people start to make up some ground? Um, not in the first loop. The first loop everyone's still trying to figure out what they're going, their pace is going to be and how fast they're going to go. As the race goes on and they loop back around that area once and then again people start to pick it up and pass people around that area because that's where you're able to build up some speed. What's your strategy, Noah? Do you like to be in the middle of the pack and kind of let a pace set itself and then you figure out where you go? Or do you like to get out in the front and get a little distance between you and some of the other runners? I definitely have a strategy similar to Sully's. We are a team. Um, it's definitely easier to have somebody like next to you that you can pace with as well. Um, I mean, just getting into the middle and making sure you're not in the back getting caught is a great thing to do. Today we have joining us in the booth after just finishing the race, senior Patrick Sullivan. How you doing, Patrick? Good. You're doing pretty good. And Noah Rogers, uh, junior at Marysville High School. How you doing? A little out of breath. A little out of breath, I can imagine. As they come down around the uh, baseball fields, there's a nice little hill. You're kind of heading towards the Splash Park area. It's a very scenic look right there, but you're going downhill. You go around the Splash Park. You get your first real glimpse of the St. Clair River. Is that a, a fun area to be able to run and be right in your home course in your hometown? Uh, I guess so. You get a nice view of the river, as you said.
Are there other teams, other competitors? Do they like to run at the Marysville course? I would like to think so. I mean, our park is nice. I mean, it's nicer than some of the other places that we've been to, like Croslex, whose course is right next to the sugar factory that's there. So I would like to think that other teams enjoy our course. We had some adjustments, and Noah, I know your father, being the coach of the team, had to make a couple of adjustments. There was some construction in the area, and Bridge is doing some uh, pipeline construction, so had to shorten a little bit where you would normally would have gone out into the woods a little bit more. And how did you make up that extra yardage then? Um, well, as Sully talked before about an extra loop, we definitely had to add the extra loop. Uh, and since the last course, it, I definitely miss uh, going through the woods because that was a pretty uh, cool scene to look at. That's nice. With the addition of some of the footage uh, that had to be added to the course this year, now the sled hill becomes a factor. Uh, how grueling is it to get up that hill uh, twice? Not once, but twice. Um, I don't think it's necessarily that hard, but like the, having the mindset before it can definitely uh, hurt you as you're running. Um, I think me and Sully are a little bit more uh, comfortable with it as we uh, run it a little bit more often than the other uh, teams. Now you see, as the runners are coming down around the Marysville bandstand, it's a little bit of a downhill uh, slant, but you're not downhill for very long. You start a slower hill climb, but it's still a climb, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I think, and I think probably others think too, is the hardest part of the course. Because you don't anticipate the hill that is there to be difficult when going up it, but it takes so much more energy than you think, and you end up losing time because of the energy that it wastes. Uh, let's start with Patrick. Patrick, how do you think your race went today? I think my race went pretty well compared to last time we ran, I ran this course. And Noah, what did you think about your race today? I definitely thought I improved since last time we ran this course. Because often our course is a little bit more hilly, so it's a bit harder than some of the others. But I think we did well as a team this time.
Well, the weather today, it's a little bit overcast. There's a little threat of rain just in the distance. The uh, forecasters tell us that maybe uh, we're going to get out of here before the rain hits. But uh, about 70 degrees. Was it a good day to run today, Noah? Is this a good, comfortable temperature for you? Absolutely. Uh, that temperature is just about right. It keeps it just comfortable enough so you can run as well. Now you can obviously see that we're coming around behind the old Marysville Museum, the community center and the tennis courts. Uh, Noah, is this a good time? You're starting to see the line thin out a little bit? Oh, definitely. Um, it's, if you're a good runner, especially you want to take advantage of those moments because uh, it's an automatic process for like people to slow down on that hill. And that's definitely where the line will stretch out for the most part of the race. Let's talk a little bit about summer training. You certainly had some uh, much hotter days back in August and early September. Uh, how do you make adjustments now as the season goes on from those really hot days to a little more mild temperatures now? Well, over the summer you would see like guys dressed in tank tops and shorts and girls wearing tank tops and shorts. But as the season goes on, people start wearing things like hoodies and sweatpants while they run in order to stay warm and not freeze to death while they're running. What are some of the common injuries that uh, we might see? Noah, have you had any specific injuries? Uh, I have not, but something common on our team is we've been having a little trouble with stress fractures and stuff. Other favorite courses? You, you, as a senior, you've run for a lot of different courses. What's your favorite course, obviously, after Marysville's course, your home course? 
Well, a race that we're going to be doing next week is Oxford. Um, it's a very hilly course on a golf course, and it's really hard, but it's also a good course for you to run on. Lots of people get their best times there despite the difficulty of it. And Noah, what's your favorite course to run? I definitely like that course as well. Like, uh, two of the things that um, uh, can slow you down as a runner is uh, hills and um, unlevel ground. And something cool about Oxford is that it just has hills and not both of them. I see on the schedule you're down at Metro Beach quite often. Do you run quite a few races down at Metro Beach? We run two races at Metro Beach. One we've already done, which happened, I think, two days ago on Tuesday, and another one that's coming up in two weeks after Oxford. Uh, do you know where the regionals are going to be held this year? Uh, Goodell's Park, I believe. Out at the county park? Yeah. And have we run that uh, course yet this year? No, not this year. Not this year. Okay, so that'll be a fun one to see. I'm sure it's uh, got some interesting challenges awaiting you out there as well. Oh, it does. And then the state qualifiers, they go on to the state meet. Where is that going to be held at? Uh, Michigan International Speedway on November 1st, I believe. That's got to be pretty exciting. I understand kind of the finish is coming back into the middle of the, the track, and that's got to be a very exciting event to be able to go to. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, friendly rivalries. What, uh, what's uh, some of the schools that are your best rivals? Avondale. One day, I think last year, two years ago, at the Hanson's Invitational Meet, we ran into the school that we got to talk to, and eventually we agreed that we would become rivals. Well, you just naturally yeah. thought that would be a good it's thing. Yeah. It's yeah, like, we just walked up and said, hey, do you have a rival? You are right with that. Well, that's the way high school athletics are supposed to be. You, you meet people from other schools and learn a few things. That's good. So now every time we see Avondale, we give them a little friendly ribbing about the rivalry. Okay, very good. Um, how about uh, a little closer to home? What are some of the, uh, the rivalries around here? Same as all the other sports, St. Clair, Port Air Northern, Port Air High, those types of things? Yep, exactly.
I'm going to talk a little bit about fan support. Uh, you can see all over the park. There are parents, there are fans, uh, they're running across trying to catch you at different parts of the uh, race. Uh, that's got to be kind of fun to hear uh, mom or dad or somebody cheering you on. It is pretty fun to sometimes uh, I think the parents run more than us going if they have multiple races to watch. It'll be funny to watch throughout the, the race today because you will see the same people in different shots all around the course. Exactly. They do a lot <laughs> yeah. of running, you're right. One of the things, Patrick, I love the most about cross country when we come down and do this event, the sportsmanship is awesome because uh, it doesn't really matter what color your jersey is. The adults, the fans, they're cheering for every student athlete that runs by. I think it's, it's just an awesome sport in that regard. Yeah, even during the race, you would see some of the runners like go up to people from other schools and telling them to pick it up to run with them so they wouldn't get left behind and just encouraging them to do better, which that's, is amazing. That is really nice. And that's a, such an important part of high school athletics anyway. I mean, everybody wants to win and wants to have their personal best record and all that, but really the bigger life lessons are in sportsmanship and creating uh, friendships and memories, so that's pretty important. Yeah, definitely. Patrick, let's start with you. Let's talk about some of the uh, team traditions. What uh, Every team has their own little uh, fun activities they do, a cheer, or a, a little event that they will take part in. Does the boys team have something specific? Um, the boys and girls cross country team at the end of each season faces off against the girls swim team in an event called Aqua Sox, which is essentially a giant scavenger hunt throughout Marysville. So we get a list and we have to run around the town finding the items, which is always a fun time. Now when you say run around the town, do you literally mean run or do you mean get in your car? We get in our car. Oh, okay. our I would say you would have an advantage over the swimmers if it was running because you've been training to do that.
Uh, any other fun pregame activities, pre-meet activities that they do, Noah? Uh, well, not pregame, but like uh, sometimes we get a trophy, uh, especially one from the Wilcott Farms. Uh, we have our whole team uh, lick the top of the trophy. <laughs> yeah, that I've heard about that one. I uh, I wondered why that was kind of by itself in the trophy case. That one uh, it makes more sense now that I hear that. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to talking about uh, preparation for the season. Uh, over the summer, how many miles did uh, you put in in preparation, Al? Well, I put it just above 500 miles. Uh, that was uh, definitely a goal of mine to do this summer. Um, before the summer, uh, my coach, my dad, uh, told us that he'd give us a shirt if we ran 350 miles or 500 by the end of the summer. That's pretty awesome. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. What a goal. Last year, only... I think one person had been in the 500 mile club and that was Jim Sturtridge and he was the only person ever to get into the club. This year I believe there's five people? Yeah, five. Five different runners. And then we have one girl who got 350. Wow, that's so. great. Was there a summer camp? Did you travel at all? Uh, actually, yes. At Timberwolf, Timberwolf Lake, there was a cross-country camp that the team went to for a week. And it sounds a lot worse than it is because, you know, you think running camp, uh, run all the time. But no, we run maybe twice a day, twice a day. And um, we weren't running. We were doing things like a zip line that they had, paddle boats, go-karts, a game called Octoball. Not only the getting your legs in shape and getting ready to go, but also the team chemistry factor, I'm sure. Yeah, the team definitely grew together when they went to the camp. Uh, the camp is uh, pretty cool, especially because it's not meant for cross country, uh, but we're able to come there. And the reason we do is because uh, all, all the hills in the area, because as we all know in Marysville, we've got one hill on Cuddle. And so it really helps us um, get um, in tune with our training.
Both of you have been running now for quite some time, and as junior and senior, uh, you've got to be able to go back and reflect your ninth and 10th grade year. What are some of the changes you see in your own running style, your preparation, those types of things? Patrick? Right. Um, when I first joined cross country, just going to be completely honest, I was not good at all. My first race, I think I ran more than 30 minutes for a 5K, which is just a ridiculously slow time. But as the years went on and I began to run and get better and get inspiration from other people on my team, I got better. And so I think this year my record is 18 minutes and 30 seconds or so, which is outstanding. In very, my very competitive. That's great. And Noah, what about you? Do you see better techniques? Do you have you developed uh, different philosophy over the years? Do you train differently? Uh, definitely. Like my coach has helped me a lot, especially like um, like getting into the mindset of how to uh, make yourself go faster. Like for example, when you're making a turn, you want to come out wide and cut in close, and it especially helps when you're trying to pass people. And if you cut it close uh, before the other person gets there, they can be uh, wondering where you go once they get around the corner.
Now as our runners are making that uh, last loop, it's kind of the half of loop around, but they're coming around the ball diamonds one more time. Then for anybody that's been around a long time in Marysville, you know the old inside track that's at the top. That, uh, that's a pretty nice way to end the race. You actually are on an old track. Is, can you pick up some speed there? Yes, that's right around there is definitely when most of the runners will start to pick up for the last little boost that they need to finish the race. That's when they start thinking, okay, I need to pass this person here, I need to pass this person here in order to finish how I want to finish. And so running on the track definitely does help because you get a sense of you know where the course is going to go now. You know it's just going to loop around and then you're going to be done with it.
Patrick, you compete against a lot of these same teams, and as you make that loop and you start to see your positioning, you know some of the other runners, their times, your times. You start to jockey for position thinking, okay, I know I can uh, do a little better than uh, this person, or is that where those rivalries come in and you push yourself a little harder also? I think at that point in the race, usually I'm thinking about just passing bodies. I don't think that person's from St. Clair and they run like 1930, I can pass them. I don't think Avondale, 20 minutes, I can pass them. I just think I need to pass that person that's in front of me right the second. Take one at a time as they're coming. Yeah. And Noah, we see the, the finish line. It's actually a shoot as they come up. A lot of fans on each side, they're coming up to the finish line. You can finally see that, that moment of glory. Uh, does that get pretty intense in there when you're jockeying maybe two, three runners, real tight positioning? It can be, uh, especially um, with having all those people there, definitely uh, makes it a little bit more intense. And that's kind of uh, makes our course different in one way is that we have everybody lined up right there. And we're able to do that because our course is a little bit more condensed than others.
Well, it certainly was a, another great race. We uh, enjoyed watching the uh, girls uh, race today and having both of you in the booth with us. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. As the girls finish their race, let's go over the individual top five places. The 2014 girls Marysville Invitational Cross Country Champion is Rachel Bonner from Port Erin High School. Rachel had a time of 19 minutes and 25 seconds. Runner up, second place, Gabrielle Morton from St. Clair High School. 20 minutes, one second. In third place, Camille Belquez from Emily City with a time of 20 minutes, 45 seconds. The fourth place finisher in the girls race, Miranda Cates from Croswell, Lexington, 20, 48. In fifth place, Megan Cates, also from Croslex, 21, 02. Now to the team scores. For the girls, 2014 Invitational, Richmond, fifth place, 158 points. In fourth place, the Mariners from Marine City, 151 points. In third place, the Big Reds from Port Aaron High, 135 points. The runner-up, Marysville Vikings, second place, 108 points. And the team champion, the Croswell Lexington Pioneers, first place, 100 points. Congratulations to all of the girls for an exciting race. And thank you for joining us on M6, your hometown station, for 2014 cross-country action. Be sure to join us again next time.